Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Sin Stuff. Today we're going to be talking about, get ready for it, FM sound design on the Modi X and Montage. Coming up next. I know I've probably lost half the audience already because as soon as you say FM, everybody immediately thinks of this and this and this. People say FM sound design. Oh, you got to know, like, you got to do like math and programming and and really complicated stuff that that has nothing to do with creative process. I'm, and that's totally true. Forty years ago, when the DX7 came out, doing FM sound design was painful. Not so today. Synthesizers like the Montage, the Op6 especially, makes it really hands-on to do uh, uh, FM sound design, mean that you can actually get hands-on and come up with sounds by twiddling knobs and moving sliders, just like you would on an analog synth. And what we're going to do today in this video is use FM, or the FMX engine inside the Montage and the Modi X, to recreate analog sounds. So, newsflash, the Modi X and the Montage are synthesizers. People say it's not a synthesizer, it's a rompler. It just plays piano sounds and, and sounds of strings and guitars and things. Couldn't be farther from the truth. Yes, it can do that thing, but it has a full virtual analog uh, signal chain in there. You, filters, effects, all that sort of thing. And it has an FMX engine, which is the FM synthesizer engine built into it. So yes, it can do all those DX7 sounds. And yes, there is a lately bass sound in there. And you can download all the DX7 sounds and actually transfer them into your montage or your Modi X and it will play them natively. However, you can still use that FMX engine to make pristine, crystal clear replicas of traditional subtractive synthesis waveforms, square waves, triangle waves, sine waves. You can do all that in FMX. And because you can do that, you can then use it as a synthesizer just as you would an analog synthesizer, analog subtractive synthesizer. Plus, it can do way, way more. You can modify waveforms and tweak them and change them around. So we're going to do that, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. All right, I've got four devices here all recording at once to try to, to capture what I'm doing here. So I've got the screen, and I've got an oscilloscope that shows the waveform that we're putting out. So here's, here's what a piano looks like. And then I've got the controls up here. Uh, on the Montage, you have eight. On the Modi X, you have four. And you have to switch between uh, one and four and, and five and eight just with a, with a button over there. But you have the same thing on both. So what we're going to do is create uh, from scratch an FM sound to emulate analog synthesizers. So we're going to start by going to Category Search. And then we are going to select Init over here, which shows us only the Init patches and we're going to select init normal FMX. Okay, that gives us a simple uh, FM sound that is just a sine wave, as you can see. Okay, now we're gonna get in some FM sound design. So let's go into our first part that we've created. And we can see that we have a general, which is just like on the uh, AWM, the sample based. The first thing we want to do is select the algorithm. The algorithm is a really fancy word that makes people afraid because they associate it with computers. And that is telling us what is going to feed to what. So we have modulators and we have carriers. Carriers you hear, modulators you don't. Everything that's on the bottom line is going to be a carrier. Anything that's above it is going to be a modulator. You can see on this algorithm, this default algorithm, all we have is carriers. There are no modulators. So what that basically means is that it's going to be producing eight sine waves. So if I bring all the, the values down, I play a note with here, nothing. And if I bring up one, it's a sine wave, two, it's a sine wave. And same thing all the way down. So all of these are just playing sine waves. You can see number one here has a little line going around. That means it has some feedback available. And you can see the feedback value there. Only one item can have feedback. It could be a modulator or it could be a carrier, but in any algorithm, you only get one feedback loop. And what that basically does is takes the value of uh, that, that first carrier and it's gonna feed it back into itself to modulate itself. 
So if I play a note, and we'll bring that up so we can hear it, and then I start bringing up the feedback value, you can hear it changes the sound of that one note. And I mean, obviously, it's almost a, a kind of a, a muted sawtooth right there. Of course, we can't really get much more harmonics out of it because we're, this is a very basic algorithm. So for this sound, we're gonna be designing, we're gonna have two. We're gonna have one modulator and one carrier. And what we wanna do is find several that we can put together so we can build the sound up to be loud and, and full. So we're gonna do an algorithm search. So this is going across how many carriers, this is going up how many uh, levels or chain levels of modulators. And I wanna have a lot of carriers, but I only want two modulators. So you can see there's quite a few in here that have um, uh, just two, uh, le two levels or a two level chain. So let's start looking and see what we can pick from. And I think that's gonna be our winner right there because this one, uh, on the top right here gives us uh, four different voices, if you were, uh, or operator or carrier modulator pairs that we can use as individual voices. So let's pick that one and use that one. So there's our algorithm. Now, before we do anything else, I'm going to show you what feedback can do if we actually have feedback on a modulator rather than a carrier. So let's bring up number two because that's our, the one we can hear. And then we'll bring up number one, which is the modulator on that carrier number two. And you can hear it brings in harmonics. So now if we bring in feedback on that modulator, it brings in even more harmonics. And the more we do, the crazier it gets. And so if you get high enough, it basically, if you have enough feedback going, it just turns into white noise. So let's get rid of the feedback because we aren't going to be using feedback for this one. But let's start with our first two here. So operator one is going to be that modulator. Let's start with operator two, which is just a simple sine wave. That's all it is. So we bring up two, we're going to hear it. very simple sine wave, okay? So we're gonna leave that untouched for now. Let's go to operator one. Operator one, you remember, is the modulator for operator two. And right now it's not having any effect at all because I've taken it down. So let's bring up operator one. And you can hear it makes a difference. So we're going to change the spectral of operator, or the modulator one to all one, which is changes the harmonics that we're gonna be using. And we're gonna change the skirt. So listen to what happens when we bring the skirt up. So you can hear it brings in a lot more harmonics. Now this is something that's unique to the, the Modi X and Montage. The ability to change your spectral and skirt did not exist on the DX7, but it gives us a lot more flexibility here. So if we alter the, the amount of modulation from operator one to operator two, you can see we go from, when there's nothing in there, we have a sine wave, and if we start bringing that in, it starts turning into a triangle, or a sawtooth wave rather. So now we have a sawtooth there, and the more we put in there, more harmonics we get. And that sounds pretty familiar. So we have basically what is a sawtooth wave right there. So let's go ahead and do that again in operator three and four. If you remember, uh, three and four look just like one and two. So if we go to uh, operator three, we change it to all and then put the skirt up to seven. Then all we have to do is bring up number four, which is the carrier, and then bring up number three. So now we have two separate voices, both producing what sounds like a sine wave, or a, a sawtooth. So let's have a look and adjust this one. So there we go. So now we can bring up two and four. So we have these two voices. 
So let's go to operator four, which is the carrier, which is where we derive the actual playing pitch frequency that we hear. And we'll turn off the key on reset there so we're not using the exact same wave every time. And we're gonna detune that just slightly. Let's do it to operator three as well, just to see what happens. Ooh, that's a cool sound. Okay, so now let's copy the exact same thing into operator six, except we'll detune it the other way. So we'll go up two instead. So that's definitely a, a analog synth sound. Of course, we can go back to our parts here and we can copy from part one to part two. And we could also detune that one as well. Let's do this as well. We'll copy from two to three. And for part two, let's just pan that over a little bit. General settings here. And we're gonna pan it over to the left. And then for uh, part three, we're going to pan it over to the right. So that should give us some nice stereo effect. If we wanted to, we could add some effects in here. We could maybe throw some chorus. Oops, uh, type is going to be a chorus and uh, SPX, how about that? Nice! So there you go. That's a very simple sawtooth. Let's change uh, the sound of ours, of our patch. So let's mute these two and go back to the first one. And uh, we have, um, let's get rid of these two. So now we're working just on operator one and two. So if we go to operator two and or rather operator one, we have all one and seven and we listen to that. This is the one where we have just a simple sawtooth wave. Let's change the course to two. And instantly we've changed from a sawtooth sound to a, a, a square wave sound. We don't have a way of doing pulse width modulation, unfortunately, but it's a pretty close replica of a sawtooth. So if we bring up the other ones again, and let's change uh, three, we'll put that one, oops, that's not what I wanted. Let's bring that to two and five, we'll bring that up to two. So now all three of these operators are gonna be putting out si our square waves. So let's go back to our main parts here. We're gonna delete this part and we're gonna delete part three. And then we're just gonna copy part one into part two and three again, just like we did before. And we'll change that to three, copy. And just like we did before, we will edit the, um, the common, we'll go to common, we'll pan it left and right. So there's part two. And part three, we're gonna, oops, part three, we're gonna bring that over to the right. So now we have, um, each of these has three square wave voices and then each of them is panned left and right. So let's have, listen to that. Oh, that's too loud. So we gotta bring down our carriers because we're over modulating. So that's just a really simple introduction to FMX programming. And you can see it's pretty simple just to get a sound. I mean, if we just start over again from a simple init sound, there's no complex programming in here. I mean, if you don't want to know about algorithms and so on, and keep in mind, when we did the algorithm selection, we actually only used three of the four that we could have used on that one. But we could just literally just pick something at random. 
let's uh, say, uh, I don't know, how about, I don't know, how about this one? Okay, let's use that. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know we need, we need to have one, two, three, and eight up. So let's bring eight. There's our eight. Now let's bring up seven. And let's bring up six. And bring up five. And then how about four? Oh, and four's got feedback, so let's add some feedback. What's that gonna do? So as you can see, you can keep doing all kinds of different changes just to see what does it do to the sound. This one, not a whole lot. <laughs> it's not changing much. Scott from the future here. The reason why it's not doing much is if you have a look, uh, number one, the actual lap value of number one is actually quite high, which means that uh, the carrier number one is actually up all the way. So it's producing a, a uh, sine wave that's overwhelming the uh, carrier on number eight that I'm trying to work with. That's why you couldn't hear anything, but I di actually didn't realize that until I was watching this video and editing it. So, oh well, can't win them all. Seven has the most effect. These ones where you get a huge stack of them, it gets pretty complex and you, you get almost diminishing returns. But again, we could go into, uh, well, actually we could go into, if we have operator one, let's shut down everything except for operator one so we can hear just that, that sine wave. Now we can go to operator one, let's change it into this, just so we can hear what it's doing. So here's our sine wave, and we'll bring that up just a little bit more, and let's bring the skirt up. Now you can see exactly what that skirt is doing to that sine wave. Same thing if we change it to all two harmonics. Wow, there's a really nice square wave there, but with very, very narrow uh, duty cycle. Odd harmonics, same thing. You can see what the skirt does. So these are, all these frequencies, or all these um, spectral patterns can be used either in a carrier like we're doing here, uh, or in a um, modulator. So this one, the resonance, you have a skirt, but you can also adjust resonance. Get all kinds of crazy resonance in there. And of course, if you're using that on modulator, it's gonna make things just go nuts. All right, so that's a very simple introduction to FMX programming, and you can see what you can do with this sort of thing. You can get all kinds of really simple analog sounds, but then some kinds of crazy uh, FM sounds in here. You can get drums, you can get, well, uh, pretty much any sound you can imagine you can create with FMX once you've got your, your head around what the algorithms do and what the patterns do uh, and, and how you can go about using them. Hopefully that was of some interest to you. If you have any questions, comments, ideas, please leave them in the comments below. When you do leave comments or if you click like, if you like the video or if you subscribe to the channel, which obviously lets you know when we post these new videos, it looks at what you like and you say, well, I like watching synthesizer videos. Well, it says, well, this must be a good synthesizer video because he's watching it and he clicked like. So other people who like synthesizers, we're gonna show them these videos as well. And so everybody wins. We all get to see great, hopefully great synthesizer videos and, and people then subscribe to the channel. So take 10 seconds out of your day, leave a comment. I like the video, it's great. Your video sucks. Uh, I learned a lot. Hey, you're totally wrong, whatever. Just leave something, click like, subscribe, whatever you do. It really helps me out when I get feedback from you to let me know what you like, what you don't like. And a lot of the time, the comments that I get left are what gives me ideas for future videos. So if you have something you'd like to see, please leave it in the comment section below. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.